Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. Allow me to regale you with the story of a particular young man who bit off more than he could chew. I don't even really know how to start this video off. I want to tell you the story about what we did and, and all, but man, this uh, has a lot to it. Tell us about it. <laughs> What can I say? Yellow jackets are bad news. This was a yellow jacket removal that we jumped into thinking it might be a little nest. And we we had done one before that I thought was big. It was probably the size of a cinder block by the time we got it out. And this one is big, massive. So we showed up to remove uh, what we thought was maybe a uh, I don't know, yellow jacket's nest. We didn't know what to expect. It was a yellow jacket's nest is all we knew. And when we started digging into it, realized it was pretty big. So we worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And they were eating us up the whole time. And, and it kept getting bigger. Yeah. yeah it, it kept growing as we worked. We just kept seeing more and more. And I didn't know how big it was, so I kept on working on it, trying to reduce the numbers. And they, they really wreaked havoc on both of us. So we finally got them poisoned. Got them to where we could get them poisoned. And we got them poisoned and, and killed them all. And now we're going back to get the nest. Tell them what we've got for them, Johnny. You know, being a beekeeper, people think you'll just take care of anything. <laughs> I really am apprehensive about getting into this. Because I've been studying hornets and wasps. And they just don't like people. They, they're um, speciesist. <laughs> that would be racist, but cross species. They don't like other species. You get my joke? Yeah, because we're not pest control people. We're just beekeepers, and trying you know, to, trying to help them. We just tackle some crazy stuff sometimes, <laughs> just for the fun of it. And that's all this is—is is for the fun of it. Yeah. Okay. I still don't know what they are. They're not honeybees, but this one here stung me in the finger. As I was getting it out of my hair, it was trying to sting me in the head. But it lost its stinger after it stung me. It's not pulsating like a honeybee, but the stinger did come off. No, I take that back. The stinger is pulsating like a honeybee. So, for any of you entomologists, insect people, whatever. That's another clue as to what it might be. And I got my bee suit. I'm fixing to hood up, suit up, and start vacuuming. Three. Yikes, I told you. <laughs> yep. To put a lot Those, of suckers, the Those suckers are pissy. Man, they don't just get you one at a time, neither. These things are attacking my camera and everything. Oh, they are pouring out. Ay, ay, ay. In the back, in the back. Ouch. Yeah, we. They're all over me. Woo! <laughs> they are getting me all over the place. Yeah, there's about 10 on my camera. Yeah, we're going. We're walking off a good distance and they're not leaving. They're not leaving us alone. Half a dozen of them on your butt. <laughs> and I'm not gonna brush it. I brush one minute ago and he got me. That's alright. I'm killing them. Three or four on your left cuff. One on your right side here. There goes one on my ankle. They are losing their stingers when they when they sting, so I don't know what you would call them by their scientific name, but uh, 
whatever they're called, they get through a bee suit. <laughs> They're still not leaving me alone. You see them zipping by the camera. Yeah, once you piss them off, they don't go away. You know, I meant to bring another sandwich just in case I ate my lunch like that. <laughs> Crap! I'm about 70 or 80 yards away, and I think all but one of them's left me alone. Just gotta make some distance. Whew, man. They sure enough ate my lunch. They got this little girl outside playing. I'm fixing to go get her parents to run her inside. <laughs> hey, who's gonna go back and get your vacuum? <laughs> drag that extension cord. <laughs> oh boy. They want a breaker again. Yeah, she's kicking a breaker. She better plug it in somewhere else. Yeah, or turn off whatever else she's got going in there. Unplug the refrigerator and move it over. <laughs> Just hanging through the bee suit and through these blue jeans, heavy blue jeans and double layered shirts. You're just holding the vacuum hose up there and letting them fly into it. They're attacking the end of the hose violently. <laughs> Getting him on the bridges even as far back as he is. Uh oh, he just stirred them up. Ow. Think we need to come out and regroup. Huh? Think we need to come out and regroup. There must be 50 to 100 of them going after the end of that pole with that hose on it. And there's also several of them flying around him. And I'm 20 foot or more away from them, and they're flying after me over here. Bump the nest and see what happens. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I already bumped it one time. You see that cloud that came out? Uh huh. <laughs> oh. What you gonna do when they come for you? You gonna run. <laughs> Crap. Man, these things are. I don't know how many is in there. I don't know how many. Hornets are in a hive, but daggone, they just keep coming. I accidentally bumped the hive with the hose there and a cloud came out. <laughs> Bruh. Somebody on uh, another video made some suggestions on, it was a pest control guy, made some suggestions on what to use on them. Maybe I should have researched that. <laughs> Or maybe they should have called a pest control guy. But either way, I'm kind of having a good time. I know some of y'all think it's crazy, but everybody's got their own level of uh, their own tolerance for pain and, and levels for things they won't do. I wouldn't base jump, but I'll go into a bee's nest. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. This is about my fifth walk down the street. Man, I'm taking a bunch of hits in the butt. My butt's gonna be voluptuous. Gonna have junk in my trunk. I don't see an end in sight. There must be as many in there as there is in a typical beehive. This is as close as we've ever come to dealing with Africanized bees. This is a, the only thing I could use as a comparison, really. The only thing I found that really slows them down is distance. Distance from the hive. About 70 to 100 yards, they'll go away and leave you alone, but of course I'm walking. I don't know if they, if you were running, they might stir them up even more and, and they might chase you further, so I don't know. I would say walk, don't run, but I know when you're under attack like that, people panic and they take off. And I do have a bee suit on, so it's easier to say that than, than to actually do it when you're not protected. Taking another walk. Tell you what, some people ain't got no sense. Freaking telling people to get inside and don't walk by here. 
We're walking by here in shorts, talking on the phone. Idiots. <laughs> Says the guy that's taking a hundred stings by now. Well, I think we're about to to um, figure out a different way to do this. It's not the stings that are getting me. I'm just tired. I've been standing there with that stick vacuuming for man. I don't know. Got to be hour and a half now. I can tell the numbers are still or reducing but there's still a lot in there and every time I bump the hive with the stick another whole cloud comes out and so uh, you know I just don't know how many is in there and I'm, I, I love a challenge that's the only reason I'm here so I don't know what we're gonna do but we're gonna do something different a couple of interesting facts for you tending honeybees or anything when you get sweaty and your clothes start sticking to you it gets easy for them to get through it but the gloves are not so I've sweated through these as you can see these are uh, just regular leather welding gloves this one is anyway this one is goat skin beekeeping glove same thing I've sweated through it and they're not getting through it either they're not getting through the uh, sleeve on the glove but they are getting through the sleeves of my jacket not in the elbow area though because they're double layered where your where your uh, body bends the bee jacket however and my blue jeans as well I've sweated through and they're they're um, not having a hard time getting through it I literally have taken probably a hundred stings so far and just for comparison's sake the stings are a little more painful than a honey bee not much but just a little but the effect is a little a uh, little more obvious I can feel it in the muscles and nerves no signs of slowing These look like these little yellow jackets that get on your sandwich meat at a picnic and stuff. But I've never had any of them be that aggressive towards me. But I guess I guess it's because I wasn't trying to tear into their hive. Oh, that paper is just the outside. The hive is actually under the belly cloth for the bottom of the home. <laughs> Well, I'm still at it. I haven't given up yet. I'm starting to see. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see some queens crawling around. They may be relentless, but I'm determined.
Crack this baby open and see what we've got. Make sure nothing comes out. Everything's dead. Well, that's got flies in it. We're back. Uh -huh. Ooh, I see some flying. We thought they'd be asleep. We're gonna hit them with a fogger while they're all in there and not out harvesting food. They're still real active, so we're gonna use this board again to set the fogger on <coughs> the edge of the house. I guess the headlights have got them out. There are a lot of street lights around here, though. Gloved up, suited up, got your javelin pole. <laughs> I'm going this is this is wasp javelin 101. Pop it. Pop it like it's hot. Don't point it to your face to pop it. You see them? Oh, yeah, they're all over the place now. They are highly agitated. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. Wow. They'd be stinging holes in my truck. <laughs> I'm gonna back out of here and take the lights off of them so we don't get any neighbors stung. Yeah. It's been about a week since we bug bombed this this uh, yellow jacket's nest and it's really taken its toll. They're still alive and squirming down there but it has really knocked them out. There's the I'm assuming they're queens. Big giant red looking ones. Yeah, there's still a lot of them squirming and falling out of it. They're not dead yet. We're gonna stick another bug bomb and give them some time because uh, all those that are crawling can still sting. And I am not into that anymore. <laughs> yeah, these ones that are dying are still biting and stinging on this tape. We're gonna bomb them one more time. This is what most of my stings look like now. They're clearing up, but man. It's taking some time. Them dudes work me over. I'd like to get a feel for where I'm going. <laughs> I'm renaming this place Yellow Jacket Estates. What's that one, Ray? Just watch that water meter there by the cactus. We were gonna try to take this out in one piece, but it goes between joist sections. These are 16 inch on center, it's three joist sections wide, and the outside pieces are 16 inches deep. The center section is at least double that. 
And here's some new, uh, new work they were doing after we got started on this thing. Before we found, before we finally got them poisoned out, they were building back. Yeah, I'm gonna need that face shield probably because there's all kind of dead stuff up in here. That is just really pretty to me. I love it. I wish I could get a whole nest intact. Look at that, isn't that something else? I love that, man, that's so pretty. It's art, <laughs> insect art. Let me have that uh, bread knife. If I got under there on one side and you on the other and we held that piece of plywood up, could we cut it in one piece or? No, it's still between joist sections. Well, I know that. Just you have to drop one end down a little bit and cut the joist loose, and I don't know. I, I don't even know how it's attached up under the. I'm gonna have to cut the paper off of it. Yeah. Have to cut the pretty part off of it. There's a bunch of spider eggs up in there. I sprayed them with WD-40 the other day. I'm getting armpits full of yellow jackets. Jeez. These things are just stacked. Stacked on one another a dozen deep it looks like from here we've got a gentle breeze there's no live insects no live flying insects under here right now last time i was under here i thought i was gonna die <laughs> this is much more pleasant i think this one big center section is the only one we're gonna be able to try to get in one piece and I don't even know if that's going to happen because it's so many layers just in the interest of knowing how big this thing is I got a tape under here it was three foot ten wide and two foot eleven deep well the beekeeper is underneath there cutting out a yellow jacket nest what's that got to do with bees nothing. absolutely nothing but the people needed help. So did I after this. <laughs> well, I've been recording here with the camera turned backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I get this spatula up under it and cut out. I think I've cut most of the anchor points. <laughs> Look, this, this is a, a grilling spatula. I'm handled deep in it and then some and I'm still only halfway through it I'm just gonna pull the whole thing down now I think I can get it what can I do to help oh my goodness <laughs> wow Whew. I'm skittish I don't know what that sound was but it made me jump look at that monster he's coming out with it run everybody <laughs> Man. That is the core of the nest. Here's the center section. These are just some more pieces that fell from the, some of the side parts. I don't know if you can appreciate how big that is, there's a toolbox in comparison. There's the bottom side, we have it laying upside down now. This thing is huge and I would not have done it had I known it was that big. I don't think I would. I don't know, I might have tackled it. I'm a little hard-headed when it comes to stuff like this. I'm a little adventurous too. Is that hard-headed or insane? Yeah. A little bit hard-headed, a little bit crazy. That's a 15-inch saw. 15-inch blade plus blade. the handle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was... In a 16 inch wide floor joist section, there's and there's a bunch more in there that I just dug out and dropped on the ground. Maybe three or four little layers. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a couple of little pancakes that, like this. Is what that's what I expected. It was just a couple of little pancakes, maybe you know, maybe that much. 
and then as we get to working on it and they they just come, kept coming and coming and coming and I and I finally got under there and could see enough of it all I could see was this much of it and that's all I thought it was it was just a section hanging down off the frame and now that it's out and I see what I was really dealing with that was not the best way to approach this, this removal. This is all I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we expected when we came out was that right there. And we got this. <coughs> and it still stinks. Yeah. Well, it's from the dead yellow jackets. Yeah. <laughs> FYI, dead yellow jackets smell just like dead honeybees. Uh, saying goodbye for now for 628 Dirt Rooster.